Have you ever been in the comfort and safety of your own home, yet felt washed over with dread as your mind starts racing with a bunch of crazy images? I'm Hannah Mason, and in today's Spark, we're going to explore dangerous thinking. A few years ago, here in Jerusalem, there were a whole series of stabbings that terrorists decided to enact upon the civilians of my city. And to be honest, it wasn't a fun thing to go through, but the hardest thing to go through was what was going on in my own head. So I don't remember exactly when it was, but somewhere around the third or fourth or fifth stabbing, my mind really registered a pattern and I started to shrink back further and further and further. And I got to the point that I didn't want to leave my house. And I think this happened to a lot of the residents of Jerusalem. And I just, every time I had to go to the market, I just kind of flinched a little bit and held back and got, my body would get really tight. And that's really problematic, particularly because my neighborhood has so much renovation and so much renewal and a lot of construction going on. And a huge percentage of the construction workers here in my neighborhood are Arab. So every time I walk down my street, I pass by at least five to 10 construction workers. And to do that, and have all of this crazy stuff going on in my mind, just got my heart racing, and my breathing would get really short, my body would tighten up, and I just didn't want to leave home. And at a certain point, I watched what was happening, and I was like, Hannah, you don't even want to leave your own house. This is crazy. I love being outdoors. Something has to change. So at a certain point, I just drew a line in the sand and decided to create a shift in my thinking. And that's something I really want to talk to you about tomorrow. How do you get out of this panic fear state so that you can shift into a place where you're out in the world and alive and excited to be in life and just alive, right? But first, I think it's really important to understand what's going on in our minds and what's going on in our bodies when we get ourselves into this agitated kind of state, which I know all of us have been through, particularly if we spend time watching the news or in social media, or if we have friends who talk. And my guess is you have at least two, if not three, of those circumstances that apply to you. And I'm going to use myself as an example. So when these stabbings were happening, it wasn't that the third or fourth stabbing got me into a panic state. That's not really so true. How come? Because when the first stabbing happened, it made major news, it was talked about by a lot of people, it was blasted all over social media. So I was exposed to this one event as a story through multiple pieces and in multiple directions. But then my mind took it up a notch because in trying to deal with this major piece of fear, it replayed the stabbing once and then again and then again. And sometimes it would replay the stabbing exactly how I heard about it. But sometimes it would replay the stabbing by making me the protagonist of the story, right? So I'm the person walking down the street and I picture the stabbing happening to me or God forbid my child or my husband or someone else I care about or people who I know who live in the old city walking in and out of the old city every single day. And I'm picturing all of this in my mind, not once, not twice, probably 30, 40 or 100 times. And so by the time we got to the third actual stabbing, my mind had registered dozens, if not hundreds of stabbings, and it started to believe that this event was highly probable. It was very likely that it was going to happen to me and that I needed to be incredibly guarded and on high alert. So when I'm picturing these images happening, they're not just images. Every single image, just like we say that a picture tells a thousand words, right? So every image in our mind is just the same. Every image in our mind tells a story, and that story is embedded with a whole bunch of beliefs. So I don't exactly remember what my beliefs were, but I can glean from the collective consciousness of, you know, a scared Jewish people over here in Israel and tell you that it was probably something like, I can't trust anyone, or Arabs can't be trusted, or There's a billion people who surround us who want us dead. I hear people talking about that a lot, right? Or um, I can't be safe in my own city. Or there's a good likelihood that I'm going to get stabbed. Or I need to be on the lookout for knives. And it's not possible to believe all of those things and walk down my street 
and pass by the five to 10 construction workers I pass by every single day who are building one of the apartment buildings on my street and not look at them and see, oh, they're Arab and not have my heart go da, 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 and my chest get really tight and, and my everything get tight and just go into panic. But it's not them. It's my beliefs that are making me feel not safe. The interesting thing is I've walked down my street at this point thousands of times and I've passed by Arabs on my street thousands of times and not once has anyone done anything mean, said anything mean, or behaved in any way that's anything other than incredibly polite. I've gotten hellos, I've gotten waves, I've gotten offers for help with my groceries, I've gotten excuse me's, or I've just gotten ignored because they're busy doing other things. I don't need to pay attention to some lady walking down the street. But all of the stuff that I feared never actually happened. I was never, ever actually in danger. But my body actually did suffer some health consequences from all of this stuff that I was believing because our health is deeply affected by stress and stress is almost always the product of things that we're believing. So the question is, are you walking around with fear or panic or anxiety or stress? It's time to slow down and look at your situation and ask yourself, what are you believing that's making you feel this way? Maybe there's a new story that you're getting caught up in. Write about it. Write what's the story and try to identify what are all the beliefs behind that story. And if you need help from an outsider to give you a little bit of perspective and help you gain clarity on your situation and your fears and your anxieties and what you're panicking or stressed about, I'm here. That's what coaching's for. And as I always say, my coaching is 100% guaranteed because I want to make sure that you have fabulous results. In the meantime, between today, when we've slowed things down, to tomorrow, when we talk about how to get out of that crazy panic place, I wish you a beautiful day. Want to experience more vibrance, clarity, and joy in your life? Book a guaranteed session at hannamason.com slash joy.